the shape of the universe tells us about its past and future. These were the words of David Spurgle. It was said beautifully, of course, but two questions remain. Who is David Spurgle? And actually, what is the shape of the universe? The first one is easy to answer. David Spurgle is a theoretical astrophysicist, cosmologist, and the professor emeritus of astronomy at Princeton University. Who better than him would know about the shape of the universe? But the answer to the second question is like the game of thimbles. There are three options, yet only one is correct. The answer depends on the expansion rate of the universe and its density. Can you guess what the catch is here? Nobody can be completely sure of this data. Well, actually, that's it. What, the answer to the question, what is the shape of the universe? No. Let's break it up a bit. Or should we still play thimbles? In actuality, most modern research supports the theory that the universe is as flat as a piece of paper. Didn't expect that, did you? Well, what do you think about the one where it's curved, like a saddle? And the third possibility, which may seem logical and the most plausible to many, is that it is a ball. Well, let's figure out what's going on here. In order to determine the shape of the universe, you need to calculate its density and expansion rate. So why is this a problem? All matter visible to us makes up a mere 5% of what is in the universe. And that's not just the solar system or even the Milky Way, but all the galaxies and any space objects. That's right, all this down to the last visible atom is called baryonic matter, and it makes up about 5%. Another 25% of the total mass within the universe is dark matter. The term is not the best, since it is rather transparent. Dark matter does not interact with photons, which are particles of light, and therefore it is invisible. But its other properties are the same as those of ordinary terrestrial matter. You can probably make a chair out of it, and it will obey the laws of gravity. There is one small nuance, though. Dark matter consists of particles still unknown to science. In other words, scientists are almost sure that it's there, but there is no direct evidence of its existence. Dark energy is even more interesting. It allegedly makes up the remaining 70% of the universe. And if matter seems to be registered with the help of gravity, then dark energy is certainly something fantastic. According to one hypothesis, it has anti-gravity properties, so it is evenly distributed throughout the universe. Nothing affects its course, and it is dark energy that continues to push the boundaries of the universe, which, as you have probably heard, is ever-expanding. And this is as it should be. Otherwise, under the influence of the gravity of all existing matter, the expansion rate would dwindle. And this, as far as scientists can tell, does not happen. Naturally, there is no evidence for the existence of dark energy. And with all this, there is one more nuance. It is assumed that dark energy has not only anti-gravitational properties, but also negative pressure as well. Without going into too much detail, we'll just say that nothing of the kind has been discovered thus far in our world. So what is all this information for then? In order to better understand why it's so difficult to know the density of the universe, this factor is determined by how much matter is in a particular unit of volume. For example, in one square kilometer of outer space. But how can you find out if it is not even known what is present in this space at all? And this is what's so key. And now let's add gravity to our equation. It has an effect on all matter in the universe. All bodies with their mass can be said to be attracted like magnets. Therefore, density is important. It's logical to think that the more matter there is, the stronger the effect of gravity, and vice versa. But remember, we have some kind of dark energy at play that doesn't give a damn about gravity. It rushes forward continually, ensuring the expansion of the universe. So now the second variable has appeared, upon which the shape of the universe depends. Its expansion rate. There is a battle taking place between gravity and dark energy. Its outcome can be detected and understood, but for this you need to understand geometry, physics, and a bunch of other sciences. So let's get started. Scientists have calculated three possible forms of the universe. The first option is when the density of the universe is at such a high level that the force of gravity is stronger than dark energy. In such a case, the density is said to be greater than the critical one. Gravity will slow down the expansion all the time, until the universe finally acquires the shape of a sphere. Such a model is called a closed one, and its curvature is called positive. 
The last characteristic is very important, but we'll cover that later. And yes, this scenario contains a moment in the future when gravity pulls all matter back to one point and curls up. This is essentially the opposite of the Big Bang. If the density of the universe is below the critical density, gravity will give way to expansion. The space curves in the opposite direction and does not close off. Therefore, this model is called open and has negative curvature. In this one, the universe is shaped like a saddle. And then there's the third option, the one with the most evidence in favor of it. The density of the universe is at such a level that it expands smoothly without any curvature. And in this case, it will appear flat, like a sheet of paper. The first thing that comes to mind after these words is a 2D drawing. But of course, we are not talking about a two-dimensional plane. Regarding the concept of the universe, a plane simply means the absence of curvature. And to check whether it exists or not is quite simple if you know the geometry. If you draw a triangle on the surface of the ball, each of its lines will be curved because it is spherical. But it is impossible to see this on the scale of the universe. But you can still measure the angles. There's no need to get wrapped around the axle about it though. Essentially, if you add up the values of three angles and the sum turns out to be more than 180 degrees, then the triangle is on the surface of a sphere. In the case of a saddle, it would be the opposite. The lines of the figure are also distorted but in the opposite direction. Adding the values of all the angles of such a triangle, we would find ourselves with less than 180 degrees. And only if there is neither positive nor negative curvature will the sum of the triangle's angles be equal to 180 degrees, just like in geometry lessons on a flat sheet of paper. In other words, a flat universe will look like a three-dimensional lattice with zero curvature. From those same old-school lessons, you have another concept for checking the shape of the universe. If you draw lines on a spherical surface that start as a parallel, they will eventually intersect. This is due to the same positive curvature. Parallel lines on the surface of the saddle will diverge in different directions and never intersect. That's negative curvature for you. And only in a flat, three-dimensional space will parallel lines remain parallel. But how is this possible? If there was this notorious Big Bang, then matter should have scattered in all directions, thus forming something akin to a sphere. After all, the visible universe is quite uniform, and there is no edge like on a flat sheet. But there is another explanation for this that is not related to the form. Right up until the moment of explosion, all existing matter was unimaginably compressed at one single point. It was a red-hot mix, so to speak, prior to its uniform state. The same forces and laws acted on it then, too. And when all this matter scattered following the Big Bang, it remained uniform for some time. But then small deviations arose and the matter gradually began to gather into bunches and partially cool down. In such a way, the stars, their systems, and galaxies were formed, and huge voids opened up between them. An analogy that comes to mind is a balloon filled with paint. They're in the same place under the same conditions. And then the balloon bursts, and the paint bursts out of the hole. At first, it'll flow in a single stream, but over time it'll spread into a uniform layer. This depiction is chaotic, but rather uniform at the same time. And although the paint has spread on the flat floor, the layer still has some volume to it. This example is probably far from the best example that could be given from a scientific point of view. So if you are well versed in this topic, tell us in the comments if such a comparison can be made. Still, it is a pretty colorful and epic one. Scientists can calculate the curvature of the universe in ways we won't go into. And depending on whether it is positive, negative, or neither, it will be clear what form the universe has taken. Also present is some kind of background cosmic microwave radiation, an echo of the Big Bang. It's enough to know that it exists, and scientists can detect it. They are also able to measure its temperature, which is what it's actively doing. The background radiation flies towards the Earth through the universe, and the more it deviates along the way, the more it will be noticeable. Let's just say the more blurry it will be. Scientists have mapped this radiation out before. The higher the temperature, the redder the area. The lower it is, the bluer it will appear. Looks like paint spilled again. We've already determined that the deviation of this background radiation from its original trajectory results in an image being blurry. This is exactly how it would look on a map. With a positive curvature, this effect would be most pronounced, meaning that the universe would have the shape of a ball. 
If negative, which is the most inconspicuous, then we would live on the saddle. Or should I say, in the saddle? Okay, not the best joke. In the absence of background radiation deviation, the map would be normal, not blurry or compressed. In fact, there's a thing about this map. It proves that our universe is flat, subject to some minor deviations, of course. But these cannot be avoided with such large-scale observations and calculations. Everything sits within the norm, or does it? Back in 2019, Alessandro Melchiori and his colleague Eleonora Di Valentino broke the scientific world. They were not first-year students, but serious researchers, and they studied the data on background radiation, afterwards declaring that the universe is closed. How could they make such a conclusion when all other scientists were saying otherwise? It's simple. It turns out that these very insignificant errors in the deviation of background radiation are actually more than the recognized standard registered at 3.4 units. While other scientists had turned a blind eye to this, Melchiori and Valentino paid attention. So what, the universe is still spherical then? No, no. The scientific community continues to insist that it is flat. The article written by these daring scientists forced others to recalculate, revise, and study everything all over again. Most of the evidence confirms that the universe is flat. What Melchiori did is referred to as the cosmological crisis. The scientist himself explained the scandalous article by the fact that the deviation he discovered could indicate something really important, although he himself has admitted that this is most likely a statistical error. Nevertheless, it was too big of a deal, and scientists can't simply turn a blind eye to it. Because if this data turns out to be true, then half of the modern cosmological theories would immediately fall apart. On the other hand, as another scientist put it, if you want to find oddities in such a massive amount of data, you will definitely find them.